When researching Nikola Tesla, it's important to separate truth from fiction. I want to make a few videos about persistent misinformation. In this first video, we'll take a look at Tesla's Piacero. People often ask about the Pierce Arrow story, but there are in fact three Pierce Arrow stories. The first is by Peter Savo, who was interviewed by Derek Ahlers on 16th of September 1967. This story circulated in the early 1980s. The second story is by Arthur Abron, who wrote an article in the Packard newsletter, probably around 1985. Then the third is by Klaus Jebens, who claims to have found a hidden folder in 2001 in which his father, Johannes, describes his trip to America in 1930. Separate from these three, we have an interview with Arthur Matthews in which he claims that Tesla built his first electric car in 1897, in which he drove from New York City to Buffalo at an average speed of 94 miles per hour. That is an average over 373 miles, meaning that he must have driven significantly faster at times. As with most of Arthur's claims, this is easily disproven. The roads back then would not allow for any car to drive at such velocity. Dr. Andrea Poharic visited Arthur to get some answer on a different issue and concluded that Arthur was a mental case. I'll do a separate video on Arthur. Being the king of misinformation and blasphemy, he deserves no less. So let's turn to the first story. This story contains a lot of details. The car had a six foot long antenna, a converter box built into the dashboard with 12 vacuum tubes, three of which were identified as 70L70T. Top speed was 90 miles per hour, which, as mentioned, would be extremely dangerous in those years. So, who are Peter and Derek? There exists a matching Derek, but it's unlikely that he would have known a lonely old man living in Manhattan. Peter claims to be the son of Tesla's sister. Tesla had three sisters, Angelina, who married Turbovich, Marika, who married Kosanovic, and Milika, who married Glumicic. No Savo here. Milika did remarry after her husband's death, but did not have any more children. So this Peter does not exist. Or does he? Some German guy has researched this Peter and found that his original name was Peter Schliepcevic which he changed to Peter Savo after immigrating to the US of A. He is definitely no family of Tesla though. Then we come to the receiver box in the car. It says it was 24 by 10 by 6 inch and was mounted in a dash. Well, good luck with that. Next is this 70L7GT tube. This tube was not released until 1939. So, as far as I can tell, no tubes prefixed with the 7 were released before 1934. Also, the first double function tubes, such as this one, were released after 1932. So, to sum things up, this Peter Savo was no nephew of Tesla. The box could not have been built into the dashboard. The tubes or similar tubes were unavailable at that time and driving 90 miles per hour on bad roads of those years in this car would be extremely dangerous and remember that Tesla was 75 years old at the time. So let's examine the second story. On January 24th, 1993, AC Green wrote an article in the Dallas Morning News. This article was based on another article by Arthur Abram, published in a packet newsletter. In this story, Peter Savo is not mentioned, but the box with the 12 tube is mentioned. Yet, this time, Tesla built a box on the spot 
which does not sound very credible. Also, this time the box was placed on the front seat, which is more believable than built into the dash. Again, they drove 90 miles per hour, which is very improbable. And this time it is said that this test was reported in several local newspapers. I have searched the newspaper archives and was unable to find any mention. As many details of the first story can be found in this later story, I'm led to believe that this is the same story retold and slightly modified by Arthur Brom to make it more believable. The third story by Klaus Jebens also appears to be based on the first story. We see a reappearance of Peter Sappho, a non-existing nephew of Tesla. The story has few details but is clearly based on the first story and is relatively easy to disprove. The departure and arrival date of Heinrich's ship are wrong. Peter Savo is not on the passengers list of that ship, so they could not have met. When Heinrich supposedly met Edison, the ship had not yet arrived in New York. He said he traveled from New York City to Buffalo and back in one day, returning just before midnight. As a single journey takes at least eight hours, this evidently does not leave enough time to do everything Klaus said they did. He claims to have met Tesla at the Waldorf Astoria, which was demolished in 1929 and rebuilt by the end of 1931. As Klaus uses this story to promote his book, Die Urkraft aus dem Universum, I feel it is safe to assume that this too is a fabrication. Other than these facts, there is no evidence of this story whatsoever. No reports, no notes, no correspondence, no financial records, nothing at all. So I think we should put this myth to rest now.